Today marks one year since the shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. 19 children and two teachers were killed in the attack. ABC News has stayed in Uvalde for the last 365 days, reporting on the community as they try to cope. And now we're learning about one student's incredible recovery. ABC's John Quinones has his story. They say recovering from trauma takes time. That's an understatement for 10-year-old Noah Orona. He has spent the past year navigating physical and emotional wounds that very few of us could ever comprehend. His parents, Oscar and Jessica Orona. How would you describe the last year? Crazy, hectic, um, overwhelming. Been a roller coaster emotionally. Library goes to May 24th, 2022, the day their family changed forever. It started with an award ceremony for classroom 112 at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas. Teachers Eva Mireles and Irma Garcia handing out awards to students at the end of year celebration. A beaming Noah takes his picture with his parents before heading back to class with his friends. Kind of took off jogging towards his classroom in the back. And before he got to the door, he turned around and he waved. And uh, that was the uh, last time we saw him before all of this happened. 30 minutes later, the unthinkable. A gunman opens fire inside classrooms 111 and 112, killing and wounding students and teachers inside. In the minutes and hours that pass, Jessica and Oscar are among other worried parents who are desperately trying to find their children. Suddenly, a phone call. We got called from the hospital, registering him and getting him triaged. Um, that's when we knew that he was he was hurt. But the moment you get the phone call saying, are you Noah's parents, you must Our hearts sank. Uh, we just went into panic mode. Noah is alive, but suffering from a gunshot wound to his back. He's taken into surgery as his parents make their way to the emergency room. Oscar is the first to arrive to the room. So I went straight to him and I, you know, he had some bandaging on his shoulder, but I, I just at that point in time, I just went straight to him and hugged him and kissed him on the forehead. And I said, you know, you're, you're the bravest person I know. You're my hero. Noah would spend more than a week in San Antonio recovering from his wounds. Miraculously, the bullet missing any vital organs, it exited just beneath his shoulder. What did he do after he was shot? He played dead. He just, you know, closed his eyes. He never moved. He could hear, you know, things going on, but he just said he was so scared and didn't want to open his eyes. And that may well have saved Noah's life. He's made remarkable progress recovering from his wounds, at least the physical ones. Awesome! <laughs> he's able to do a few exercises as he's gained back some of his strength. But what Jessica and Oscar worry about most are the chaotic moments and the horrors their little boy had to witness. We're concerned. I mean, what he experienced, what he saw, and it wasn't just a brief moment. It was 77 minutes and then some waiting to get, you know, get cared, get taken away. How, how do you... As an adult, I have trouble processing that. I can't even begin to imagine what he's going through. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this meal. We give you thanks for this glorious day, for watching over us as you always do. I'll catch up back here. Saint, Saint, we Last Tuesday, we went to Jesus as our favorite saint. Saint Francis of Assisi, he takes care of animals. A year after that tragedy, Noah's getting back to his regular activities. He now attends the local Catholic elementary school. He plays video games and enjoys drawing in his bedroom. Right there. 
In their backyard, father and son often spend time shooting hoops. Hey, there you go. He is a survivor. Um, he did, you know, survive. But each day, I think people see, you know, a young man, a young, healthy young kid, you know, looking at him, he looks perfect. But every day, you know, we have, I'm not going to say a struggle, but it's, it's a challenge. The future for Noah and his family is still a bit uncertain as they try to deal with the kind of wounds that you just can't see. He's not very vocal right now, and that he keeps a lot of it in. And that at times worries us because we don't know, you know, if, if he's thinking about it, what he's afraid of. He's been through what some men that have served in the in the service have not been through. And, uh, you know, he's still my hero because he's so brave. Usually it's the father who's the hero to a child. In this case, he's my hero. And he will be always uh, because he's suffered so much. A brave little boy, just 11 years old, slowly navigating his future one little step at a time. Wow, our thanks to John Quinones for that report. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.